Ryan. Uh, thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. Here we are yet again fixing up yet another labour policy disaster. We have ended the carbon tax. We have ended the mining tax. Now the coalition government is reversing Labor's shambolic attempt to fleece hundreds of millions of dollars from the bank accounts of hard-working Australians. Thank goodness. This bill reverses the former Labor government's changes to unclaimed monies provisions made back in 2012. Labor's changes reduced the threshold at which funds were transferred to the Australian Securities and Investments Commission from seven years to three years. Ridiculous. Mr Deputy Speaker, if ever there was a case study in what not to do when formulating public policy, then this is it. To truly appreciate just how appalling this policy was handled by Labor in government, I recommend revisiting Hansard from October and November 2012, when this bill was first introduced. It was introduced to the parliament after 5 p.m. on a Tuesday and then brought on for debate at 10 a.m. the next day, which, fittingly considering the appalling ramifications of this bill, was Halloween. There was no committee scrutiny, there was no consultation with the opposition, and more embarrassingly, in that hung parliament, there was no consultation with the crossbench. In memorably awkward scenes, it was left to the then member for Lyme, Rob Oakeshott, and the member for Melbourne to point out to the Gillard government that friends though they were, they were not inclined to support a bill that they had not had a chance to read. When even the Greens think a revenue-raising measure is a bit extreme, it is probably the time to take another look at it. So debate was adjourned while Labor grudgingly trudged off to consult with affected stakeholders. Mr Deputy Speaker, you will not be surprised to learn that industry stakeholders were not happy with being given no notice and very little time to react to the proposed changes. Organisations such as the Australian Bankers Association, the Commonwealth Bank of Australia and the Association of Financial Advisers they all suggested three years was too short a period of inactivity to deem an account unclaimed. Of course, Labor ignored these objections and pushed on with the bill. But strangely, when the bill came back on for debate a few weeks later, not a single Labor backbencher spoke in support of the bill. Oh, what were they afraid of? If this was such good policy as suggested by the member for Oxley in introducing the bill, then what did they, why did they stay silent? Mr Deputy Speaker, we here in the coalition tried our best to warn Labor about this bill. Speaker after speaker urged Labor to reconsider. In my own speech back then, I made mention of the unintended consequences of this bill, that Labor would be inadvertently taking the accounts of people who have been saving money for travel, for university, who have been putting money away for a rainy day. I urged Labor to withdraw the bill in order to facilitate further discussion. And order. The debate is interrupted in accordance with standing order number 43. And the honourable member have leave to consider her, con continue her remarks when the debate is resumed at a later hour. Other Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Uh, in continuation, as I was saying, when Labor introduced this bill, I commented then that they needed to be aware of the unintended consequences. That taking accounts of people who have been saving money for travel for university would lead to problems. I urge Labor to withdraw the bill in order to facilitate further cons consultation. In the end, the chorus of opposition from the coalition and from stakeholders forced Labor to make seven amendments to their own bill. But the rest is history. The bill passed and here we are, three years later, trying to clean up their mess. Labor's undue haste and shoddy legislation belied the true purpose of this change. For all their lofty rhetoric, it was always about a desperate cash grab to boost their flagging budget bottom line. In the financial year 2011-2012, $70 million in unclaimed funds were transferred to ASIC. Under Labor's changes in 2012-13, this figure ballooned to $550 million an almost eight-fold increase in a single year. This also came at a human cost. As a minister detailed in his remarks, for many Australians, funds wrongly claimed by government meant cancelled holidays and delays in purchasing new goods. It meant people who thought they had money saved away were placed in needless financial difficulty. Mr Deputy Speaker, this policy was a travesty that should never have been allowed to happen. Labor should be ashamed of the contempt with which they treated Parliament 
and the people of Australia in ramming through their legislation. This bill seeks to restore the arrangements that existed prior to 2012. It restores the requirement that accounts must have been inactive for at least seven years before funds can be transferred to the Commonwealth. This will cost the government $285 million over four years, but will save the community $36 million each year in reduced red tape costs from losing and then being forced to reclaim their accounts, indeed their own money, not to mention the peace of mind in knowing that their accounts are in less danger of being seized by government. No longer will accounts set aside for family purchases and holidays be under threat. Under Labor's laws, accounts named deposit for house, family holiday 2018 or funeral expenses that have clearly stated purposes and are clearly not dormant were targets for seizure by their government. Under this bill, accounts such as these will be protected and less inactive for seven years, not just three. The bill will entirely exempt children's accounts and foreign currency accounts from unclaimed money's provisions. This is a common sense move. Many Australians set money aside for their children's future, and this money should never be transferred to the government. Foreign currency accounts are used by sophisticated consumers as collateral to settle transactions, and for this reason commonly lie dormant for long periods until or if they are required. In the interest of avoiding red tape, the government should not interfere in this process. Also contained in this bill are necessary changes to the way in which the personal information of account holders is protected by ASIC. Contrary to Labor's claims back in 2012, there is no law mandating that banks and or life insurers alert their customers to their unclaimed accounts. This means that individuals are often required to personally access ASIC's Unclaimed Money Gazette, which is published online. The Gazette publishes detailed personal information, including name, last known address and the amount of money they have unclaimed. This creates two unintended consequences. The first is the potential for identity fraud. The second is the emergence, emboldened by the controversy surrounding Labor's changes, of a cottage industry of unscrupulous companies. These companies use this information to target individuals, often charging excessive fees to return so-called lost monies, despite ASIC offering it as a free service. Deputy Speaker, changes contained in this bill will remove the requirement for ASIC to publish the Unclaimed Money Gazette and will ensure that only individuals with unclaimed accounts or their agents will be able to access their data through freedom of information requests. Labor can try to sugarcoat it all they want, but there is no denying that tinkering with policy on unclaimed monies was an unmitigated policy disaster. According to the Australian Bankers Association, Complaints about the provisions increased 300 per cent following the introduction of Labor's changes. Industry was not happy. Consumers were not happy. And that is why the coalition government is more than pleased to reverse this policy. It is all well and good for a government to seek out savings measures, but stealing money from the bank accounts of average Australians is not the way to do it. It is this sort of cynical, desperate policy making that got Labor into trouble and is now the duty of the coalition government to restore fairness to the financial affairs of Australians. I commend the bill to the House. I thank the member.